Do you want me to spin it? Whoa! I do love me some LGs, and today I've got three of them. A 14, a 16, and a 17 inch version of the LG Gram 2021 laptop. Now, which one do you guys want me to start with? The little one or the not so little one? The Chungus. The Chungus. That's fine. That's fine, just fine. We're going full Chungus here. So the Gram 17 is not as light as the Gram 14, which is just one kilogram. This puppy is 1.35 kilos, but it does come with some key benefits, including an 80 watt hour battery instead of a 72 watt hour battery and a 2560 by 1600 screen instead of a 1920 by 1200 screen. And I gotta say, the first thing that stands out to me about this has gotta be the finish. LG has glowed up the gram, like, big time here. Whew. Now I know this is just a black laptop, which isn't exactly an innovation, but the finish on it is really sleek. Let's just see if they've managed to Make it not, you know, totally flexible though. Mm, keeps improving. You know, it's always gonna be a lightness first, ruggedness second kind of device, but that's actually not too shabby. Included in the box is a nice compact power brick. I actually really like the rounded edges on it. Makes it a little easier to slip in and out of your bag. And then over on the side here, there we go. We've got HDMI two USB type C ports. Those are both Thunderbolt 4, as well as an audio jack. I'm just gonna power it on real quick here. Show off the dual USB type A's, as well as a Kensington lock and micro SD. And now let's talk about that power button for a second. That is not your ordinary power button. We've seen this feature before, notably from ASUS but it's a fingerprint sensing power button that does more than just detect your fingerprint when you get to the login screen and let you log in. It actually caches your fingerprint ahead of time. So you power up the machine, it goes, oh, that fingerprint, okay, I'm gonna hold on to this for a second. And then when you get to the Windows login screen, it'll log you right in. Assuming, of course, that you have <clears throat> pre-configured the thing. Ha, <laughs> Cortana. Shut up, we don't care. Which is fine, because the 2021 grams also include support for AliExA, if you're into that sort of thing, because Amazon doesn't have enough of your data yet. Let's go ahead and blow through the setup wizard and we'll talk about some of the other cool stuff. Boy, that is a big screen. The touchpad is another big improvement over last generation. This is actually, oh, look at that. Ha ha, ha, Jono happens to have a 2020 gram. So you can see not only is it much larger on the 2021, I actually really prefer the more sharp corners compared to the super rounded corners on the last one. And this color scheme just looks next gen. See you later 2020 gram. Almost there. Hey, there we go. Do I have an option to not get started? <laughs> nope. This can adjust the color temperature of the display. That's another key benefit LG is touting for the 2021 series grams is 99% coverage of the DCI-P3 color space. Pretty darn impressive. Now what I wanna know is, this looks like a 60 Hertz display, but could that be perhaps turned up or are we just gonna have to settle for color accurate? I do wish everything had high refresh rate. Nope, okay, that's fine. It's standard dynamic range and only 60 Hertz refresh rate. One of the other key improvements, pun intended, is to the keyboard. So they've added another 0.1 millimeters of key travel, as well as flattened out the tops of the keycaps instead of making them concave. I'm not a huge fan of concave keycaps on a laptop, so I personally consider this to be a good move. As for the layout, it is a touch cramped because LG has opted to include a number pad on the 17 inch model, but as we have a look at the smaller ones, you're gonna see that that's uh, not necessarily present. When I say cramped, by the way, to be clear, I don't mean you know it doesn't have the right number of keys or anything like that. I just find a couple of them, like the enter and the backspace, are a little bit easier to overshoot and accidentally go off the rails here. It's the kind of thing that if you were an actual owner of this device, you would get used to. Uh-oh, you see this? A McAfee pop-up. Andy, there's McAfee on my machine. Oh yeah, there's also a DTSX Ultra icon here. So supposedly 
The two watt speakers in here are like DTSX surround or something. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and uh, see how they sound at least, even if we're not testing the uh, DTS capabilities. NVIDIA's long awaited premium mid-range Ampere architecture GPU. This, yeah, it sounds super hollow, doesn't it? provides high performing teams of developers. I'm talking like this. You know, you know what I'm, you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Wow, I can really feel the position of the speakers on this device. Normally you want it to kind of sound to the user like the person they're actually watching is speaking and the sound's coming out of the screen. But we do not get that effect at all with the downward firing speakers here. They sound like okay but especially in a world where Apple's MacBooks exist and actually Dell's XPS lineup for that matter, it's a little bit tough to have speakers that are this far behind. Depending which version of mobile mark you look at, LG rates this puppy for anywhere from 15 to 19 and a half hours of battery life. And the last thing I wanna check before we check out the 16 inch is, here we go, ready? Not bad. Does it do it when it's fully turned off? I would like to know. Did it do it? It did do it. So one disadvantage to fingerprint compared to uh, a facial sensor is that it does mean that you can't just like open up your laptop and have it come to life. But it's pretty okay. Today's short circuit is brought to you by Blue Blocks. They create high quality lenses for daytime, nighttime, and for color therapy. Unlike other types of blue light glasses, blue blocks are evidence-backed and made under optics laboratory conditions in Australia. And they've got over 40 hip frames and come in prescription, non-prescription and readers. So they've got you covered pretty much no matter what you need. For every pair of blue blocks glasses purchased, they donate a pair of reading glasses to someone in need when partnership with Restoring Vision. So all you gotta do is head to blueblocks.com slash short circuit and just click the link below to make sure that you get 20% off Now let's shift our attention to the 16 inch. This is a more conventional gram kind of finish, but you know what? It's a little bit kind of a cooler color than I'm accustomed to seeing. This looks really sharp as well. So you see how much room there is for airflow back there? Kind of crazy. Just like the 14 and 17, the Gram 16 inch is equipped with an 11th gen Intel processor. And if you've got a Core i5 or a Core i7, that means it comes with XE graphics. Now, one thing I was a little disappointed to see, where'd my iFixit kit go? Is that it appears that though they got a speed boost going to LPDDR4X memory at 4266 megahertz, which is fantastic for performance, it appears as though the memory on these machines is not upgradable in any way. So let's go ahead and pop it open in order to verify. Oh, wow. You can really see like how skinny the material it's made out of is. Like it's kind of amazing by the time they assemble this whole thing that it's rigid at all, you know? Yeah, I know, they really uh, stepped up their battery packaging game. So that's the 80 watt hour that's in the 16 and 17 inch. And that's the soldered system memory. Ugh. That means that whether you go eight gigs or 16 gigs, you are stuck with it forever. I would like to see a 32 gig option in that case. And what I'd really like to see, especially given that they have so much space in here, is a SODIMM memory slot. Although admittedly, it would add extra weight. Simple single heat pipe cooler with the exhaust right back here. And this is nice though. At least they've got dual M.2 expansion slots. So both of these are NVMe capable and this one's actually SATA capable as well. It's always so crazy to me, the lengths that LG will go in these grams to save some weight. Like, look at this. Having the motherboard, look at this. Look at the size of this motherboard. That's it, right? So there's your CPU, memory, storage. It's basically all there. And then they go all the way over here with a little skinny ribbon. Okay, so there's your daughter board to handle your USB. Wireless is over here as well. And then 
you've got these gaps. See this? You've actually got gaps in the PCB, again, probably to save weight. Could also be cooling related since it's right next to the M.2s. And then Thunderbolt is handled over here along with HDMI. Oh, um, probably should have powered that off before I opened it. Oh my God, it's on. <laughs> Now it's time to check out the 14 inch. Okay, only 72 watt hour battery. And yet somehow it ends up with very similar rated battery life to the other two. And a big part of that is because it does have a smaller, lower resolution display. Of course, when you step down to a 14 inch device, you don't need as much resolution because the pixel density is still going to be quite solid. On the subject of solid, given that this is the only still sub kilogram LG gram, that is actually not too shabby at all. Like I'm putting, you can see I'm putting a lot of force on this thing here. How's the screen? Especially now that we've seen the individual layers of the material and like how flimsy they are, it's kind of amazing that it's as solid as it is. In terms of I.O., it's identical to the others, so Thunderbolt 4 is still included, full-size HDMI, full-size USB, and of course, it's crazy, crazy light. The touchpad's not as large as the other two, but for a 14-inch notebook, I would say that this is a very generous size touchpad. And as for the keyboard, I'm actually expecting to prefer this one because one of the things that bothers me about larger laptops with a number pad off to the side is that it kind of makes it so that centered in front of the device, you know, where the touchpad is right in front of you, you have to go over here in order to type and I find it a little uncomfortable. So let's see, that feels, that feels pretty darn good. Wait a second, what's this lock button? Oh. Okay, turn the webcam and mic off. Okay, they've come so far since the original Gram where they couldn't even manage to put a backlight in the keyboard and keep it under the weight limit. Nowadays, I mean, it's got all the creature comforts. It's got Thunderbolt, it's got a high-speed processor, it's got adequate cooling, great battery life. I mean, there's a reason that these LG Grams <laughs> never last long on the inventory shelf. Uh, people always snatch them up for internal use just because they, it's just kind of what you need and nothing else. And I really love the new finishes for this year. So that's it. That's our first look at the LG Gram 2021 lineup. The one thing we don't have is a refresh of the two-in-one, which was actually my favorite from last time around. So that was the foldy touchscreen one, but uh, who knows, maybe LG will send over one of those when they are good and ready. And when you're good and ready, make sure you subscribe to Short Circuit so you don't miss more videos just like this one.